Did you know how much cheese the world produced last year? 48 billion pounds! That's the way of four great pyramids in one year. Clearly, cheese is an important and yummy part of human culture. To find out more about cheese and how it's made, we visited Firefly Farms in Accident, Maryland. Located in Western Maryland, Accident is surrounded by mountains and beautiful farmscapes. We know you were curious about the name. We were too. The story goes back to 1751, when George Deacons sent out two different surveying parties to find the best 600 acres of land in Western Maryland. The two groups didn't know about each other. To Deacon's surprise, when he sat down with the independent maps, both groups had selected the same land as the best and mapped the same area. There was even an overlapping area that he dubbed the Accidental Tract. And the name stuck. But back to cheese. Firefly Farms started producing cheese in 2002. They partner with farmers within a 30-mile radius for fresh goat and cow milk. These milk producers receive a premium for higher quality milk. The cheeses produced by Firefly are handcrafted and all natural. Head cheese maker Dan Porter explained the basics to us and showed us how cheese is made. They use just four simple ingredients to make their cheese. Milk, culture, rennet, and salt. Dan explained that cheese making mimics the way our bodies digest milk. To understand that, it helps to take a closer look of what milk is made of and how it is structured. Milk is made up of water, proteins, fat, sugars, vitamins and minerals, and some small amounts of natural occurring bacteria. So it's liquid with lots of solid bits suspended in it. One of the types of proteins are these tiny clusters of casein proteins that all have negative charges, so they repel each other. Kind of like these two toy trains with the same magnetic charge. They don't want to touch. That means these proteins don't want to bunch up. We will see why that's important in just a bit. Let's see how the four ingredients make cheese. Ingredient number one is milk. This is the truck that picks up milk from the farmers. Milk is pumped into these holding tanks. Monitors keep records to make sure the system is cleaned and stores and processes the milk at the proper temperatures and time for safety. Keeping everything clean is very important and is stressed throughout the plant. The storage tanks are refrigerated and the mixing paddle keeps fat from separating out. When they are ready for milk in the cheese making room, it gets pumped over from the storage tank. Once it's in this tank, it is ready for pasteurization. Remember that natural bacteria I told you about earlier? Pasteurization is the process of killing that bacteria with heat and time. You can pasteurize milk by heating it to a high temperature for a short amount of time, but that isn't good for cheese making because it alters the proteins too much. So this milk is pasteurized at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. 
In this case, it's held at a minimum of 150 degrees for at least 30 minutes. Now the milk is free of any living bacteria. But a lot of cheese flavors and characteristics come from the bacteria, good bacteria. And that is what's called cheese culture. Cheese culture is our second ingredient. The next step is cooling the milk down to 90 degrees and adding a cheese culture. Which cheese culture depends on what cheese is being made. You could think of it like this. We got rid of the unwanted bacteria with pasteurization. And now we can just add the bacteria we want once the milk has been cooled. Note that some places make cheese from unpasteurized milk. That's a different process and not the one we are showing. After the bacteria has been added, it is allowed to incubate. That means it begins growing in the milk. Now we have milk with none of the bacteria we don't want and the right amount of the bacteria we do want. But we are still working with a liquid. Here is where the third ingredient comes in, rennet. Rennet is an enzyme. Enzymes break down proteins. Rennet is kind of like these scissors. Remember those casein protein clusters that didn't want to touch each other? The rennet enzyme snips off the end of those protein chains, and now they lose their charge. Instead of repelling each other, now they are attracted to each other. All the casein proteins begin sticking together. This separates things out in the milk in what we call curdling. The solid part is called the curd and is made up of most, but not all, of the protein, fat, vitamins, and minerals. The liquid part is called the whey and is made up of most, but not all, of the water and sugars. That is the same process our stomachs do when digesting milk. The rennet and acids in our stomachs curdle the milk. How much rennet is added and how long it sets is determined by the cheese you are producing. More rennet and more time produces drier, harder cheeses, and less rennet and less time produces softer, wetter cheeses. The next phase of cheese making is called manipulation. Which means how the cheese is handled. The large mass of curdled milk is cut into smaller chunks of curd using a tool like this. The size of the chunks is important. Take some of these big pieces and break them up. So we want them all to be about this size. Yeah, that's one cheese curd. You think you would want to eat that? Not really. Why do you want it that size? What's that? Why do you want um, it that size? Basically, for like, if all the curd is bigger or smaller, it will end up a wetter or drier cheese. If they were all real big, by the time you're done, they would end up much wetter cheese. And so we want them to be kind of consistently a half inch per, like an inch down to a half to little. So if you find any big pieces like this guy, you just want to take these long ones and pinch them up into smaller ones. So this is 280 gallons of cow milk. It's going to be about 300 pounds of blue cheese when we're done with it. This is going to be blue cheese. Yeah. When the curds are ready, the vat drained is opened and the whey is drained off. It isn't wasted though. The whey still has some protein, minerals, and vitamins as well as most of the sugars. Firefly Farms puts the whey in this storage tank, which area farmers have access to. They pick up the whey and feed it to their pigs making use of its nutritional value. The curds need additional draining, which also varies by cheese type. It can be put in molds and compressed with weight, or it can be put in cheesecloth and hung to dry. There is even a process called cheddaring, used for more than just cheddar, where the curds are drained and stacked repeatedly to create a drier and more crumbly structure. Whatever additional draining methods are used, the point is to get the moisture content right for the type of cheese being produced. The fourth ingredient is salt. When it gets salted, how it gets salted, and how much salt gets added depends on the type of cheese being made. Even the salt crystal size can vary. 
It can be mixed in, sprinkled on, or applied by soaking the cheese in a brine. This particular cheese is held in a 25% brine solution for 36 hours. So that's how that cheese gets its salty flavor, is from this water that has salt in it. It floats around in there, and then that's how it gets the flavor of salt. How long do you have to brine it for? Uh, that one is actually 36 hours. So, it's, so some of them are two hours, four hours. There are many other ways the cheese can be handled or manipulated to affect its flavor and texture. This blue cheese has needle-like holes poked into it to promote internal mold growth. Can you see all those holes? Yes. We punch all those holes by hand, and then the blue mold grows inside of the cheese, and then when you cut it, it all has blue mold in it. I think that these guys here, they have salt on the top. You see, that's how this cheese gets the salt. And the reason that these are called blue cheeses is because they're covered with blue mold. So you see all that mold on there? That blue, it gives it a good flavor. It makes it taste good. You might not think it tastes good, but it does. <laughs> but we'll get you something to try later. So it also has the holes punched in it. So all that same blue that's growing on the outside is growing in the inside. And then we wash the outside and we seal the vacuum bags and then it'll look like what's in the other room. Oh, it's another kind of blue cheese. So these, this is the same cheese that we saw going exactly. in there. Okay, just, it's gotta go through those this. Those have the blue cleaned off the outside because all we're going for is the inside to be full of blue. These are a pyramid shape. Pyramid. So, yeah, these start out, they're not a true pyramid because they're flat on the top. But these start out white, and then these are going to start growing blue mold too. Can you see how they're kind of fuzzy on the bottom? You see how they got that fuzz on them? That's mold, and it will turn into blue mold by tomorrow. Oh, so oh that quick? Today, tomorrow they'll be blue and they'll look about like that. How long have they been in there? These have been in here for about a week. Okay. So at about a week old, then they get blue grown on the outside, and then they'll get all covered with blue. How do you get the right bacteria, the right blue? <clears throat> we add those cultures in the milk at the beginning. And oh. everything's living in this room, too, so like that helps a lot. But um, like if you put some white cheeses in this room, they would also get blue because yes. there's so much in the air. So we have separate rooms. Some cheeses are scrubbed to promote a growth of a skin-like case around the cheese. So this, all these cheeses are called wash rind, and they basically have stuff growing on the outside that affects the rind and the bacteria and the skin layer that grows on the outside. And that's what makes it smell in here. You smell how it kind of stinks? Can you smell it? No, not You can't even smell it? You should work in a cheese factory then. <laughs> so how often do they have to be washed? Um, so what she's doing right there is brushing. So they're called a wash rind because when they start out as white cheeses, you wash the bacteria onto them. But as they get older, you're just kind of smearing it around. So that's a bacteria called Brevibacteria and lemons. And it gives them a uh, flavor and a color, and it also protects them from anything else. Some cheeses are flipped every day. But this whole room is full of cheeses like this and like this. Oh, okay. And that's a cow milk cheese, and that's a gold Okay, but how is But every cheese gets flipped every day. And so that's what Alan's doing right now is he's flipping every cheese. Still other cheeses are aged for different lengths of times and different conditions. See if you can pair that one. Oh my goodness. You got it? I, I can't. How much does that one weigh, you think, Alex? About 20 pounds. Oh my goodness. Did you see when it was made? When was that cheese made? It was made this year. Look at it. What's it say? What date? Uh, it was made 119. Correct. Yeah. So what is one? What month is one? January 19th. Right. So we made this back in January oh. of this year. And it's ready. It'll be ready to eat in about August. So it's not ready yet. In some cases, there can be extra ingredients added, like herbs or fruits. And some cheeses don't require a culture. And sometimes an acid is used to create the curds or an acid and rennet combination. And while some manufacturers may add artificial preservatives, Firefly Farms does not. So the foundation of cheese making is just some basic, natural, simple ingredients. Milk, culture, rennet, and or acid and salt. From that, there are over 1,800.
hundred varieties of cheese produced. So even though great cheese starts with these simple quality ingredients, the real secret to great cheese making is the skill, passion, and experience of these artisanal cheese makers. You don't have to be around Firefly for long before you see how much they value their people. Their suppliers, customers, and community too. So what happens when all this great cheese is ready? It gets packaged and shipped. We got to watch some fresh goat cheese get packaged into logs. So just have to change the way that you can take soft cheese and force it into the logs. You can just leave the conveyor. This little conveyor is going to bring the cheese over to him. And then what this machine does is it takes a sheet of plastic and it forms it into pouches. Here, come over, you can just get close. It forms it into pouches. And then he's going to load the cheese into the pouches. And then further down the machine, it puts a top layer of film of plastic on the top. And then it seals it like string cheese. Do you have open string cheese? So it's a day, and we can add salt to it and package it to that. So it would be like from in the gold to in the store in like four days for this. Because this is a fresh cheese. That's why they call it a walk-in refrigerator. And so everything in here is packaged and ready. So like that's a that's a cheese that's ready to eat. This is a cheese that's ready to eat. And those are cheese ovens. Those are boxes of so in each one of those boxes there's 12 of these little logs. And what we also make big logs for restaurants. So this is the same cheese here. Feel how heavy that is. So we make big packages for like restaurants to use and stuff because they don't want to open up a bunch of these for the restaurant. They just use one big one. Oh, so yeah. there's lots of cheese in here. At the end of our tour, I got to help label the packages and box them for shipping. Then we drove down to their retail shop, just south of town. In there, we sampled different cheeses and saw the many other gourmet items and wines they offer their patrons. We even had lunch there. The sandwiches are delicious. And you know they come with great cheese. If you were ever in Western Maryland, make a visit to the Firefly Farm store in Accident. Or visit their retail store in Baltimore or shop with them online. And if you do, tell them thanks for giving Oki School of Adventure a tour and teaching us so much about cheese. See you on our next adventure!